This is DHS or Discount Horror Show. I don't mind either, whichever. But I like DHS because VHS, DHS, yay! Okay, yeah, <laughs> we're going with that. So, I wanted to do a thing on horror movies based around Christmas time. And like most of these, a lot of them either served as the inspiration for Black Christmas or were inspired by Black Christmas. Now that can be a good or bad thing. I mean, without Silent Night, Bloody Night, we probably wouldn't have had the creepy caller from Black Christmas. But depending on your ability to handle all different people's, like, whisper talk all the time, where they're just gonna talk like this, and be like, tis, tis, hello, tis. It's, <laughs> but that's, that's Silent Night, Bloody Night for you. Anyway, without it, we wouldn't have Black Christmas. Well, we wouldn't have the talk around Black Christmas, but the rest of it we probably would have had. I hope, anyway. But, specifically, right now, I want to talk about a film from 1982 or 1983, depending on the release area. I can't really find a specific thing that says, no, this is exactly from 1982. Anyway, it's Blood Beat. <laughs> and the... It's currently streaming for free on Tubi and on Amazon, but I recommend the one on Tubi, even though they're both from Vinegar Syndrome, which is an amazing um, website, obviously. But it's an and Vinegar Syndrome allows you to have like some pretty neat um, remastered. They completely go in. They will restore these movies almost to complete perfection because this movie you can tell they had a hard time with. They mentioned that when they found it, it was covered in mold and mildew. And in the final scene of the movie, you can totally tell what wasn't salvageable, but they did the best they could. But it does not ruin the ending of the movie at all, because it's just, it's like a five second scene and you're fine. It's just a conclusion that didn't really need to be there. So they could have technically cut it if they wanted to, but Vinegar Syndrome is dedicated to what they do. And for whatever reason, <laughs> they chose Blood Beat, which is a movie. <laughs> That is terrible, honestly. It is awful. It is pro But I do appreciate that the director himself has even said, I, I don't know what the ending was, and nobody really does know what the ending is. I mean, you watch it, and this isn't a spoiler at all. You just watch it, and you're like, oh, well, that was a movie that I wasted time on. And that's what I thought last year, because originally I wanted to film this last year. But I didn't do that. Ah, anyway. But I rewatched it again this year, going in, having read a few reviews from um, the Vinegar Syndrome about their interviews that they did on the DVD. I do not have a copy of it. Gosh, do I wish I did. <laughs> blah, blah. It's discount. So we're just basically going with what we can get for free or what we can find streaming on YouTube. Or a lot of them are fair right use and copyright free. But Bloodbeat is not one of them, unfortunately. Anyway. The description, the official description of this movie, and I have to quote it because it is so good. The description of this movie, and I quote, is, A woman travels to rural Wisconsin to meet her boyfriend's family, but her body becomes possessed by the spirit of a Japanese samurai who goes on a killing spree. Do you want to watch that movie? Because I want to watch that movie. But once I watched that movie, I realized, but when I watched it, I realized that that wasn't what I wanted to watch at all. It was terrible. It's awful. It makes no sense. Um, but I've seen a lot of people criticize the acting in that movie. There's nothing wrong with the acting in that movie. If anything, it's, 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 it's the sound. It's the fact that the director... Um, the problem is the director, Fabrici Zaparitos, decided to do the writing, the directing, the uh, music this movie and it, <laughs> he tried he tried so hard and that's the good thing because you still can tell that it, that it's a movie it, it's not something I regret watching it's something that I think did a good job at being a film that's confusing and I am very upset that it hasn't yet been riffed or anything because it deserves a little bit more cult classic than it currently has. It has a lot of love, but it doesn't have kind of the respect that it deserves. I'm not going to go out of my way to watch this movie. 
I go out of my way sometimes to watch Manos, but I'm not gonna go out of my way to watch this. But it's in the same vein of what? But it's due to its credit, it is filmed much better. It's it's filmed a thousand times better than Manos. It's filmed a thousand times better than a lot of Schlock films, which is saying something. It's a lot of love went into this movie, but he learned his love of film from his father, so he tried to like honor all these different great films, and and he does. It's just, it's so sloppy, and it, it runs too long, and there's scenes that make no sense, and then there's effects that are so confusing that even, even the closed captioning has to dub all these different weird sound effects that they decide to do, so most of them come out with mystical boing, and that is my favorite thing ever. You'll see mystical boing, eerie boing, all these other different things that they decided to caption it with, and that is my favorite thing ever. It's amazing. The captions on this movie are accurate on Tubi as well as they're accurate on Amazon. They might get one word wrong out of like which is really good considering the crap that I've seen and considering a lot of like auto-generated or terrible but somebody vinegar syndrome actually gave a crap and probably captioned it themselves but I'm not a hundred percent on that that is not a fact that I know and this cast is relatively made up of unknowns who have never acted again which I will say is a disappointment considering the fact that they were all pretty good again a lot of people complain about them I don't think they were that bad they did the best they could with what they were handed. There was a girl that looks very much like Shelley Duvall, and and that is pretty dang cool if you ask me. And she does a good job acting like possessed. There's a lot of this. There's a lot of ha. Ah! There's a lot of there's a lot of weird inverted shapes and things over people's hands. Is the mystical boing and the um, the telekinesis and telepathy and all the crazy magic goes on. There's just a ton of it. So that might cause seizures. I don't know, but I'd be cautious if you have light sensitivity. I do get a lot of migraines, and it can do that, so normally I keep the lights on when I'm watching it, so I don't get the full effect of the movie. Yeah, I know, blah, blah. But I'd rather be able to watch a movie rather than not be able to. And that's that. <laughs> but I will say, with uh, the entire samurai thing, they... They might explain it, they might not. Uh, you have to kind of watch it for yourself. But it is a mess, it is a disaster piece, but it's beautiful, and I think it deserves at least a once watch. The second time I enjoyed it way more, but maybe it's because I knew what I was getting myself into. It's kind of slow paced, it's kind of boring, there are some animals that die, and that's not fun. Oh! And! And! The, um, the killer samurai kills when the lean has an orgasm. So maybe you will be interested in it. Maybe. I don't know. But maybe that'll make some of you more interested in this film. I don't know. Maybe. And I'll just keep saying that until you give this movie a chance. It's on Tubi. It's free. Why not? <laughs> The next film is Silent Night, Bloody Night from 1972. It never registered as copyright, at least that's what Wikipedia says, and the fact that you can find it almost anywhere you want. You could probably find it in your bathroom, you could probably find it underneath the couch, you could probably find it on your shelf on one of your many horror packs. It, it's, it's, you know, public domain, so it's there. The best copy available that I've currently found streaming is on Tubi TV. The audio is much better, the picture is much clearer than the one that is currently available on Prime for free. Well, Prime Video, which is free if you have Prime. Anyway, um, it's, it's deeply forgettable, but I will say it deals with an asylum and sexual assault. None of it is shown, except for the asylum, obviously, because it's the house, it's where it takes place in. Um, but that isn't a spoiler because, uh, yeah, it's in the description. It says, uh, like, the, the film description doesn't even know how to label this movie, so they just wrote this tiny little blurb about it. All it says is, an axe killer stalks a lawyer and his new girlfriend in a house that used to be an asylum. And that's about as deep as this movie gets. Really, that's, that's about as far as it gets. Uh, but it's stretched out to an unfortunate runtime.
Keep in mind, the YouTube quality is still okay-ish. It's not the best. There's still lighting issues because it's from 1972, so there's going to be issues. And it was made for TV. But the fact that this movie has um, stuck around and has been in better quality than a lot of other films that were actually made for cinematic release at the time is good. It's a good quality. Just watch it on YouTube. This was the last film roles of Candy Darling and of James Patterson. Patterson had his lines dubbed after he died in the middle of production. So that explains why there's a little bit of weirdness with his voice. It's fine. It works. You don't really notice too much. You're just kind of like, oh, that's an interesting voice. But you don't think too much of it because it's, it is what it is. It's just there. So you deal with it, and you don't really realize it until I was reading later, and I was like, oh, well that explains why that seemed a little bit weird, but okay. Um, I've watched this movie twice. The first time was frustrating. The second time, it was better due to the 2B quality. Um, yeah, and that's about it. I, if you want some horror ASMR, then this movie is great for you, because the phone calls, I could probably put in a full video of just ASMR, and people would like it. Because, for whatever reason, that's the audio they went with that's really good. The rest of it's kind of eee. But that's like the one scene is the guy saying, Tess, 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 I love you, Tess. You're not my sweet Tess. Over and over and over again. It gets kind of annoying after a while. Um, it has a ton, it has a ton of Andy Warhol superstars, which you think would be able to save this movie. I think that's possibly why it's gotten such cult status isn't because of the quality of the movie itself, of the plot, the storyline, or anything. It's more of the cast. It's more the fact that this is the last performance that we're going to get from some of these actors and actresses, and that is actually sad because all of these people deserved better. And um, honestly, I don't understand why this is classified as a Christmas film or a Christmas horror film, I guess the name, but it has many alternate names over the years that probably would have worked better. Um, but otherwise, I don't understand. I get that the, um, the main thing of the movie did take place on Christmas, but it's mentioned maybe once and it's kind of throwaway. You don't remember it, you don't think of it as Christmas, except for maybe there's a there's a Christmas tree in the police office. I don't know. Maybe. I can't even remember, and I've seen it twice. Um, yeah. But I will give this movie credit, because the phone talky scenes, the ASMR as I call it, um, it inspired the phone calls apparently in Black Christmas. And for that, we are incredibly, incredibly thankful, because Black Christmas, um, that's a huge part of it. That's a huge part of what makes it spooky. That's a huge part of just the ugh, because I hate that. I, I can't handle that very gritty talk and psychosis. I can't. No. Mm -mm. No, I'm good. <laughs> it's scary. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, so it's streaming for free basically anywhere you can stream a, you know, region free movie. Uh, there have been multiple releases of it, and Honestly, the best one has been the one on Tubi, so that's, that's, that's that. That's, you know, Bloody Night, Silent Night, or <laughs> Silent Night, Bloody Night, which gets confused with um, Silent Night, Evil Night, but they're two completely different films. Very different. And now for my favorite, from 1972, comes Home for the Holidays, aired as an installment of ABC's wide world of mystery on March 4th, 1974, despite it coming out on 1972. Anyway, this one stuck with me the most besides Black Christmas, because obviously Black Christmas is like top tier. I mean, it was made for theaters. This movie was made for TV, and it is... Mm, I love it so much. Um, it's the made-for-TV horror genre, which is usually over the top to the point of comedy, but given the superb casting, it is like... It's not cheesy, it's like cheesy nostalgia. You just love it. I can't explain it. It's so oddly good and entertaining as long as you can find a decent copy of it because the one on um, Prime was appalling. Um, but 
I mean, the cast is amazing. Like, it's Sally Field, the Sally Field, uh, you know, and they gave her barrettes and a sweater vest. Who does that? Made for TV movies do that in the 1970s. So you get, you get, you get your Sally Field in a sweater vest. Yeah. And she still has that, like, mm, face on a lot of the time. But it's because she's so sweet and she's so, like, lost because she's the youngest of all these different sisters who, um, you know, you also have Eleanor Parker, the Baroness from The Sound of Music. I know. I know. That's amazing. She's beautiful. They're all beautiful. They just honestly have such a beautiful cast. And you also have, like, Jessica Walter, who definitely needs no introduction. She's incredible. And Jill Haworth, the original Sally Bowles. Uh, from Cabaret, and if you're not sold on this cast alone, then you, then I'm sorry. <laughs> and the fun fact is that Julie Harris also played Sally Bowles on Broadway, just in a different production. So that's pretty cool. We got two Sallys. I mean, you're not sold? Are you not sold? Because I feel that sold it. Like, they're all hysterical the majority of the time. Like, they're in hysterics! Or they're like silently brooding and like, hmm, I wonder who could have killed mother. You know, it's nice. I like it. <laughs> and I feel like that cast alone should sell it. But maybe I'm selling this like those like new movies, you know, that come out every year about various holidays and the casting's phenomenal. Like, you know everybody. But then when you watch the trailer, you're like, oh no, this looks terrible. So maybe I fell for this, this like ruse of the holiday movies with people that you like, but this was before they were super huge names, so they're still kind of finding their way around, which is adorable. But I watched this last year as well, and the quality on Amazon was so bad, you were like, is this a field or Sally field? <laughs> okay. Basically the plot is these girls come home to see their sick father, who they have no idea why he's getting sick, but he claims it's his new wife is poisoning him. And then this is where I'm going to add the trigger warning. They basically go through this in the first like five minutes of the film is that their mother died um, of an apparent suicide. But some of the girls do think that, the, that his new wife did it because he was cheating on her. It's this whole thing. Um, but yeah, it does deal with the topic of suicide. So if you're not okay with that being discussed or being slightly portrayed on screen. There is a mild attempt that's done off screen, but you do see a little bit of the aftermath from the 1970s, and it's made for TV, so they didn't go all out. It's it's discussed, it was very taboo at that point, so t even talking about the antidepressant usage wasn't a normal thing for these kind of movies. Um, but yeah, nothing's too graphic, there's some blood, uh, yeah. Um, it's all done in, like, lifetime fashion, but 1970s. The acting is genuinely believable, of course. It delves into some cheese, because it was made for TV, so there's going to be a little bit of that and a little bit of growing pains. Um, that's all I'm going to say on that. I would be not covering this well enough if I talked about free movies that are currently available and didn't mention the masterpiece that is Black Christmas from 1974. It stars, stars Olivia Hussey. And there, my review's complete. That's all you need. I mean, it's Juliet from Romeo and Juliet. Come on, come on now. Just watch it, honestly. I mean, it, it's it's a classic for a reason. It it has an excellent casting, like everybody in it's amazing. It has Margot Kidder too. You're not gonna go wrong with this, you really aren't. There's nothing overly um, upsetting in it. I mean, it's a slasher. They do have like a few horrible things that are said over the telephone, but it's, if you can't deal with that, I totally understand. And now, for whoever slew Auntie Rue, or who slew Auntie Rue? Who, I wonder? From 1971, it has Shelley Winters in it, who honestly needs no introduction, but there is, uh, there's two kids, Katie and Christopher, and Christopher was best known for his portrayal of Oliver in the stage production of Oliver that was also transferred to video. Um, that musical I will not comment on. <laughs> but it, it's sad because a lot of these kids never acted again and they're incredible. Like Mark Luster, amazing. He was Christopher and he did such a good job. There is a scene of a bird getting its head removed. I did not like it, but it's there. E what can you do? It's about this 
old eccentric lady who's known in the town as Auntie Rue. Auntie Rue, Auntie Rue, whichever aunt, aunt you want to say. Ha! Huh. I'm gonna stick with Auntie Rue. Uh, so a lot of people have argued that this isn't a Christmas movie, but I'd argue that two thirds of this movie takes place at Christmas time, which is more than Harry Potter can say, and it's still on the ABC family lineup. So, so Auntie Rue is a Christmas movie. <laughs> okay. I love this movie. Um, it's eccentric. She's an eccentric old lady, and you're not old. She's like middle-aged, and you're introduced to her by her being in a child's bedroom, and she's rocking this crib. Like, this is the first couple minutes of the film. I'm not spoiling nothing. And all of a sudden you see that she's rocking a, like, mummified corpse, and you're like, oh no, Auntie Rue! But she lost her kid, which is revealed at the orphanage that they take you to in the next scene. And then takes you to an orphanage where you meet the orphans Christopher and Katie, who are siblings. And they've been escaping a lot recently, and they're apparently in constant trouble, so they're not speaking to anybody. They've basically taken a vow of silence, so to speak. They don't talk for a while. And then it's announced that um, Auntie Rue is doing her yearly Christmas party where she invites over like 10 orphans to come and spend Christmas and New Year's with her to have like toys, presents, feast. It's for all the good kids of the orphanage, which is sad. But they also tell the alternate activities that kids that aren't invited get to do, which is kind of fun. I mean, it's not going to Auntie Rue's house, but you know, it's something. But Auntie Rue lives in this huge mansion, and of course Christopher and Katie aren't picked because, you know, they've been disobeying but they end up sneaking on the back of the the little old car and they get in there and then Auntie Rue meets them and she's like, oh, stay, children. And you're like, oh, goody. <laughs> you know, so they get to have a happy little Christmas and then it's revealed that Auntie Rue has seances regularly, talk to her dead daughter, and apparently her dead daughter, like, speaks back. But... It's, it's a good movie. That's basically the plot of it, is, is Auntie Rue lost her kid, and now there's orphans staying with her for the Christmas holiday. And you can pretty much surmise what's going to happen from there. I don't want to spoil anything. It's fun. It's, 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 it's fun. It's eccentric. There's a lot to it. I thoroughly was enjoyed and entertained the entire time that I watched it. It actually captured my attention, and it made me question the number one thing, is how does Auntie Rue make these many costume changes so fast? I really want to know, because she's wearing like these 1920s, 1930s like corsets and old dresses and Victorian morning gowns, and it's amazing, and she'll just be in one seat and then like, flinging you into the next, and she's just in a whole other getup, and you're like, who is helping you? That's the real mystery. The, the title probably shouldn't be Whoever Slew Auntie Rue. I'm just going to throw that out there. Because I think me questioning that, like, spoiled a little bit of the movie for me. Because I was like, whoa, who? Who? So, I mean, you know, it's in the title, so you're going to question it. But there's a lot of movies that have odd titles, but this title is just so wonderful. It's so delightful. Oh, and she does a little vaudeville number, so stick around for Shelley Winters doing some vaudeville in this movie. I love it so much. Oh my gosh. But yeah, two-thirds of this movie is Christmas, so it counts. It counts as a Christmas movie, and I'm sticking to that. But yeah, it's free on YouTube. Um, I say watch it. it the quality's not bad, considering the year and considering I don't think that anybody bothered to restore it as well as it should be. I hope that it is and I hope to own it. And so the next horror film I want to talk about on this little magical holiday adventure of horror films from the 70s and 80s is To All A Good Night from 1980. And it's now streaming on Prime Video, which I didn't know at the time. I guess it just got put up because I had to watch it all on YouTube, and finding a decent quality of that is very hard because for the longest time the only copies you could get were VHS copies, which are, or Christmassy or anything interesting, I was like, alright, well, it's a discount horror show, so I'm not going to shell out 15 bucks. If there was a rental available, I would have done it, but now it's available free on Prime Video, which I swear happened overnight. But the quality looks good. It looks much better than the YouTube versions that I found. If you want to watch it on YouTube, I did. It wasn't that bad. 
Um, the problem is, is that it is the VHS transfer, which they themselves have admitted is not good quality, unfortunately. It just, it didn't transfer from cinema to um, VHS well at all, like, at all. And it's been admitted all over the internet for years, probably decades. Um, so that's the unfortunate part about this movie, is if you want to watch a good quality, you're going to have to shell out the money for it. And honestly, I don't find it that worth it. It's kind of a throwaway movie that they just incorporated some Christmas elements into. And that's basically about it. Um, yeah. I love VHS copies of films. I will go out of my way to get a VHS copy of a film. But this one, they've even admitted themselves that the transfer to VHS originally was so bad. Because the color doesn't translate well from cinema to home video well at all. It's muddy, it's dark, you can't see anything. And apparently they stole some of the lighting from Black Christmas, like inspired, inspired. Um, I wouldn't say go out and buy the $15 copy unless you're a huge fan, unless you're a huge fan of Kiva Lawrence. Then I would say yes, add that to your collection because you'll probably enjoy her acting in this movie. But there's about five girls in this sorority that are now living at this other place for Christmas and then their boyfriends are flown in on a private jet because they're all rich boys, but they're not really their boyfriends, just the one girl has a boyfriend. The soundtrack, I do need to make a comment about the soundtrack, because it's, it's suspenseful and you like it for like five seconds, and then all of a sudden this like, you know those little like noise makers, like the ones? That little, like little spinny toy that like you used to see kids carry around a lot? Not, not a fidget spinner, but like the little like noise rattler thing. That'll just start up randomly, like the spinner will just spin and you're like, what? You can't really tell what happened, but there was this girl and she was with her sorority and she fell down and then like 15 years later or something, probably five, you know, somewhere in there because again, blurry. It's a quick opening scene and you hardly see anything. So you know it will be plot related, but you don't really understand what happened. There's no build up, there's no nothing, it just happens. You're just like thrown into this random scene of girls running up the stairs and then a girl falling down the stairs. <laughs> you can't tell if it was an accident, you can't tell if it was implied, you can't tell anything. Because you have no idea what you just watched. Hmm. Um, but then you fast forward in time. And it's years later and it's Christmas, so the sorority sisters, not previously shown, it's a whole different troop of sorority sisters, um, are gathered around for the holiday and the one girl is inviting her boyfriend who's super rich and then they decide to get the sweet girl to, played by Jennifer Runyon, who plays Nancy, to basically drug the house mother so that she sleeps through the night so they can have fun with their boyfriends. And then that's when all the college age shenanigans start happening. It's normal, it's 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 hormonal, it's stuff, it's you're like, okay, sure, I guess somebody dies and you're just like, no. Cause you don't know why. It's just this Santa suit individual killing people. And you don't know why and you don't really care. Well maybe some of you care. I, tons of you probably do care. There is cult followings for everything after all. And I mean, I'm a huge fan of Grease too, so I have no room to talk if you love this movie. I just found it kind of boring and kind of hard to see. Oh yeah, and Kiva Lawrence is the house mother, so that's nice. That's a good fact. <laughs> just throwing that out there. Um, yeah, and then there's like this groundskeeper that's in the movie for like five minutes, and he's meant to be all dark and foreboding, and you're like, okay, good plot, good plot, alright, cool character. Nothing goes anywhere. You don't know what's happening half the time. And there's five sorority sisters, okay? There's five of them. But I swear I saw each of them die like ten different times. Like, I couldn't keep track of them. And I feel awful. I feel awful that I couldn't place anybody. That I couldn't, like, figure out who anybody was. The only one that I felt got decent development was, of course, the final girl. And that, you're still like, okay, well, I guess, sure, all right. It, like, <sighs> the best part about this movie, sorry, the best part about this movie is the poster. That's the best thing I can say about it. Yeah, but the plot wasn't great. The ending was a choice that somebody decided to make for whatever reason. I don't know why. Like, there's questions all over the internet about certain things that this movie did, and nobody knows why, and it would be kind of cool to know. Because, 
I don't know. Like, I feel like, at least in Black Christmas, while you don't essentially know, you're fine with it. With this one, you're like, uh, okay, sure, maybe, I don't know. Like, anyway, it's, the quality on Amazon is, is better. It's, it's much better. Um, but, you know, buy the Blu-ray if you have the dollars to do so. Especially if you want to watch a, 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 a especially if, a, you know, a Santa Claus dressed as a killer at a sorority intrigues you enough to spend 15 bucks. I would probably pay the $3 to rent it if I had the choice to see a really good quality of it so I can see if I was actually missing out on anything, but I don't feel I was. It was just, ugh, it was so bad. You're a good girl. You're not bad. You're a good girl. She thought I was calling her bad. Oh no, you're a good girl. Anyways, so that's basically, that's basically it. So that's my honest reviews on all these Christmas horror movies from the 1970s and 1980s that are currently free streaming. There's a few sequels that are free streaming for other horror movies that I didn't go over, but since the first one isn't available for free, I figured it wasn't worth going through them. Um, considering that this is discount, and because I don't like paying that much. I get horror packs, I get, I get horror packs, and I have a few streaming services that I like. Um, if I'm interested enough, I do pay for rentals. If I'm interested enough, I do buy copies, if they're under, like, a certain threshold of money. But a lot of these didn't intrigue me enough to spend the $15, especially not with Silent Night, Bloody Night, and especially not with, um, to all a good night. Those two, I would not, I cannot recommend them. I mean, they're slashers, sort of, but none of it felt very well done. None of it felt interesting. I don't know. Who Slow Auntie Rue at least had some intrigue, had some good acting. While it's cheesy, it's good. Home for the Holidays, cheesy, good. Black Christmas, I mean, we can't even discuss that that is basically one of the most influential horror movies and one of the first, one of the first slasher films that, you know, kind of paved the way for a whole bunch of other films. But, again, without Silent Night, Bloody Night, we wouldn't have probably had a lot of the cool, you know, little details that Black Christmas had. So, all of these movies are worth it, technically. Um, all of them have their own good moments, their bad moments, but... And some of them never got the proper chance to shine, and some of them have never been properly given the treatment that they deserve. I'm looking at you, Home for the Holidays. I think you deserve better. I think you deserve... I think it deserves better. All in all, Bloodbeat is definitely one of those weird films where you kind of got to watch it in order to understand if you're going to like it or not. It's boring, it's slow, but I use the term boring loosely because it's intriguing. All of these movies have their own goodness and their own badness, and some of them are just, they're seemingly terrible. But again, they all helped inspire the horror movies that we have today, and they helped inspire the current genre of horror, Christmas time. So without these weird, weird, wonderful movies, we probably wouldn't have all these new Christmas horror films that are currently streaming and currently being shared in theaters, or remakes, etc., sequels, you know. We wouldn't have that without these. We just wouldn't. So for every bad movie, there's always something good that can come out of it. Especially, especially with Silent Night, Bloody Night. It might seem like a bad movie, but it did help inspire Black Christmas, and for that, we do owe it something. If you want to give it a little watch in the background, if you just want to throw it on while you're doing something, while you're like, you know, folding laundry, doing your taxes, I don't know. It's not bad. It's just not great. I hate saying that it's bad, and I've probably said thousands of times that it's bad. No movie is truly just the worst thing ever, and all these opinions are my own. So if you like these movies, tell me why. I like to know. I actually went into Bloodbeat not liking it, because I watched it last year and I hated it. But then I started to read more about it, and I was like, huh, huh, I'll give it a, you know, I gave it the second go, and I liked it a heck of a lot more than I did the first time. It's still not great. It still makes no sense. It still has a mystical boing that is the best. It's the best. 
But all in all, you know, there's... But all in all, you know, there's just so much. There's so much that can come from these movies. There's so much that has come from these movies. There's so many varied opinions. And if you don't agree with mine, that's fine. This is just what I'm saying that I personally think you should spend your money on or not. And that's not... And I owe no weight on your personal choices. <laughs> I'm just a random person with movies that I like to watch and horror packs that I like to stare at. Very good. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you have a lovely holiday season or what is left of it. I'm Discount Horror Show and I'm going to say good night. <laughs> So thank you for watching this. Stickle! Boing! And that is my